Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Oldfield here with you, and we are so glad that you're with us and hope that you're ready for another study from God's Word on this Sunday, January the 7th, first Sunday in 2018. And uh, we hope that you're ready to study God's Word with us. We want to encourage you to get your pens and paper out and take notes. And if you'd like a copy of this program, uh, probably give you an audio copy of it in some way, or maybe a video, a DVD, any literature that we give you, friends, uh, books, uh, written literature, videos, anything like that is free of charge. We never charge for anything. We never ask money from you, from the community, because we know the gospel is free, and it's our responsibility as as Christians, members of the body of Christ, to give that information out to you. And so all of this is brought to you by your friends from the Church of Christ. Uh, a word from the Lord is is brought to you by the church that meets at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. And we hope that you'll come visit with us. Today, let me give you a little preview about what we're going to uh, uh, be talking about. I have um, in front of me, I have a couple of uh, little tracks that uh, you probably see from time to time, pick up these uh, have uh, Charity Baptist Church in Eden on them, and um, just some information that um, that uh, these tracks and, and tracks like it uh, put out are very, uh, let's say, just to be uh, very uh, nice, I guess, very misleading. And it's always good to have the Bible out when any time you're getting uh, literature. And I mentioned earlier that. We give away literature, and we encourage you, if you get anything from us, books or, or tracks or anything like that, never take what they're saying at face value. Go to the Bible and see if what you're saying is true. But in these tracks, this one's titled, Did You Know? Um, and um, it talks about, basically it's talking about salvation, what they're saying the Bible says about salvation. But what I'm going to key on, in on is a phrase that says, uh, receive Jesus. Uh, on the very back it says, receive Jesus. And it gives a, a verse, John 1, uh, 12 to 13, which we're going to be looking at. And then it says, just bow your head, repent, believe, receive Jesus by faith, and he will do the rest. Is this accurate? I mean, is this, um, is this really what the Bible is saying when it says receive Jesus, that that's it? You know, when, oftentimes when people talk about uh, asking Jesus to be your personal Savior or receive Jesus, uh, what do those phrases mean? Uh, I think a lot of times people, they use Bible phrases and they never stop to think about what they really mean. And I think we've talked about that on this program uh, before in different different phrases. But what does it mean to receive Jesus? I mean, it, does the Bible use these phrases? Obviously it does. It says, as many as received him. Uh, gave he the, the power to become sons of God. And so this is this is what we need to find out. What does it mean when the Bible says it? Is Are these phrases, are they uh, uh, indicating um, the meaning that most of these tracts and pamphlets uh, indicate, or is there something else? Oftentimes what people do is they use these phrases, these biblical terms, but they use them incorrectly. And friends, using a biblical term does not make it right if you're using the biblical term incorrectly. And so it doesn't really matter. You're saying, well, it, you know, my preacher preaches right from the Bible. Well, if he preaches right from the Bible, that's I'm glad he's using the Bible, but is he using the Bible correctly? Peter, uh, Paul tells Timothy to uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or handling aright, handling correctly the word of truth. 2 Timothy uh, two fifteen. So it's not enough just to say, "Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using biblical phrases." Let's make sure we're using them right. So when people use biblical terms, uh, are they using them correctly? Sometimes you might hear people say something like "church," you know, and when they say when they say the word "church," they're talking about the building. Well, that's not right. The Bible doesn't talk about the the church being the building. The Bible talks about the church having ears and eyes and um, and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, the church is made up of the people. So when people talk about it as the building, that tells you they're using a biblical phrase, but they're certainly using it incorrectly. Another one is 
uh, saying the body of Christ, which is a biblical term, and then their definition of it is all denominations. I saw a, um, a marquee uh, there in Eden that said there's going to be a unity uh, ministerial alliance. Ministerial alliance, and uh, it makes me wonder, you know, what all denominations are going to be involved in that ministerial alliance? And is it going to be, uh, uh, you know, different denominations that are that are contrary in what they believe yet they claim to have unity I, I don't be interesting to know and so when we're talking about using biblical terms we need to use them correctly and so uh, saying receive Jesus is is one of those terms now here's the question uh, can Jesus become a person's savior we hear people say you know make Jesus your personal savior well, Jesus can be a person's Savior. I mean, as a matter of fact, Hebrews 2 and verse 9, uh, the writer says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So everybody has the, has the chance, has the opportunity, for Jesus to be their Savior. Uh, Paul said in Galatians 2 and verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Jesus can indeed be someone's Savior. I mean, that's what he, he came for, to seek and save the lost. But the question is, can a person receive Jesus? And how does a person receive Jesus if that's the case? Well, let's look at one more verse. John 1, John chapter 1, and uh, verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name which are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, here's the question. How does a person receive Jesus? It's clear the Bible says it. Jesus uh, is um, able to be received. But what does it mean? How does Jesus become someone's Savior? How, how do you receive him? How does a person receive Jesus? And that's really the question we're going to be discussing today on this program and so we hope that you will uh, join in with the Bible study with your pen and paper as we said and, and go through the verses write, write them down look them up we'll try to give you time to to turn to them if not I'll give you a, a list of all the verses or I'll give you my notes or some way we can give give you something that you can go back and listen to this program again this will be on YouTube so you can go back and listen to it again find it on YouTube uh, just Search for James Oldfield, the Word from the Lord, and it'll be there. It'll be titled Receiving Christ. And so you can go back and listen to it again, 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 as many times as you want to. Download it onto your uh, MP3, your MP4 player, whatever, uh, iPod or iPad or i whatever, and listen to it as many times as you want to. So... Um, uh, we want to do that very thing. We want you to take advantage of that. So any way that you can listen to it again, we want you to do that. Examine it. Check it out. See if what we're saying is true. But how can you be a part of the program? Well, here's our phone numbers. 336 is the area code. I'm going to give you two phone numbers. 336-427-9696. 427-9696. That's 427-WMYN. Or 627-9563. 627-9563. 9563-627-WLOE. And that's how you can be a part of the program. We're going to be discussing uh, how does a person receive Christ. Friends, let me give you some more content information. If you want to, excuse me, if you want to uh, um, reach me after the program is over, you can reach me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. That's my email address, a word from the Lord at gmail.com, and my phone number is 276 340 2653. And again, the Church of Christ meets at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. Uh, Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship. Thursdays at 6, uh, excuse me, Thursdays at 7 p.m. 
for Bible study is, is when we assemble for our, our midweek services. And so we hope that you will come out and join us and be with us there. And, and uh, we have good Bible, Bible studies together. And we hope that you will come out and participate with us. And so it'll be just like this, this program, this type of program, this kind of information being given out. Uh, you can ask your questions. You can ask, you know, we have dialogue. Been to a lot of places where the, they don't really want questions or, or comments. They're not really uh, concerned about whether you understand what they're saying. They just want you to accept it at, uh, at uh, just from the fact that they're saying it. And we don't ask you to do that with us. We want you to, to uh, test what we're saying like the Bereans and examine and see if it's lining up with the Bible. So we hope that you will uh, come out and do that very thing. So, how do you receive Christ? How can a person receive Christ? Well, I apologize, friend. You'll hear me snorting and coughing, I think, and uh, getting a little drainage, I think, the weather. So I apologize for, for that in advance. But first of all, how does a person receive Christ? Well, what does that word mean? What does that word even mean, received? Um, there's a number of definitions, and, and you know, friends, a lot of times, in our language, we have words that mean different things depending on the context. And context is always king when it comes to studying the Bible. If you want to know what a verse means or a word means or, or what is being said, look at the context. You have to look at the context to find out what is being said or how a word is being used or what it means. And so that's, that's really key. But when we're talking about receiving, there's a number of definitions that the word received or how it's used number one it means to take with a hand so if you receive something it's placed into your hand that's that's how you receive it well obviously that's not receiving christ you don't grab hold of christ you're laying hands on him um that's not what it means another definition is to take up as in uh it's used of a place receiving one in acts uh, three let me give you an example this acts three in verse uh, 21, Acts 3, 21, uh, the Bible says, when heaven must re uh, whom heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things. So it's, it's a, the place that, that, that where one is going to be dwelling. Uh, another definition is to grant access to. And he, but here's the one we want to look at. To receive favorably, to give ear to, to embrace, or to make one's own to approve or to not reject. That's what it means to receive. When we're talking about receiving Christ, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about not rejecting Christ or approving of Christ or receiving favorably what uh, 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 what he has to say. That's really what we're talking about. A good example of this is in Luke. In Luke chapter 8 uh, and verse 13, we're talking about the parable of the sower. And the Bible says, or Jesus says, and they on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in a time of temptation fall away. So this is what we're talking about: receiving it in this in this fashion, receiving it to uh, receive favorably, to give ear to, or to embrace, to not reject. And so we're talking about receiving Christ. That's where that's. Where or that's how the Bible talks about receiving Christ. And you say, well, James, how do you know this? Okay, fair enough. Well, let's, let's again, let's go to the Bible. Let's look and see what the Bible has to say about these things. First of all, we need to understand and realize, friends, that Jesus has representatives. In other words, to receive Christ is not just to receive him uh, personally, because he's not here personally. He's not here uh in the flesh anymore. So if we're going to receive Christ, it's going to have to be some way other than literally receiving him like you might receive a guest into your home. And so how, how do we do that? Well, we have to recognize that Christ has representatives and because he speaks through them. He speaks through his word, Hebrews 1 and verse 3. Uh, Christ being the express, uh, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of of God's person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So Christ 
is no longer on the earth, so he has to have individuals that will represent him. And if you receive his representatives, then you're receiving Christ. Um, friends, and, and, and again, you know, we have to use a little common sense when we're talking about the Bible. We do this all the time. We use the same idea, same mindset when we're talking about uh, everyday matters. When we have representatives of our country that are uh, go to another country or vice versa, when representatives of another country come to our country, they are received. All right, they either are welcomed or they're rejected, and that means that we're receiving or rejecting that that whole country. If so, if if the if the president sends someone overseas and they receive that person, they're they're receiving the representative of the United States, an ambassador, so uh, so to speak. Well, Christ is the same way. He has delegates. He has individuals that he has placed in authority. And that, that stood for him. Uh, notice this in Matthew 10 and verse 40. This is what Jesus said to his apostles and disciples. He said, He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now you see how that works? So Jesus said, If they receive you, they're receiving me. And if they're receiving me, they're receiving God. They're receiving the Father. So how is it, friends, that people all say, well, I'll just receive Jesus, receive Jesus. No one talks about receiving God. And it's going to be the same way. You're going to receive him based upon how you, receptive you are to his representatives. Now look at this. Look at another verse in Luke 10, verse 16. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. Jesus said, he that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. So now that's the opposite. Either you receive Christ, if you receive, if you receive uh, Christ's uh, representatives, those that are speaking for him, then you're receiving him. If you reject, then you're rejecting him, and ultimately you're rejecting God. And that's how we have to recognize, friends. We have to recognize that this is how Christ operates today. Now, those representatives... His apostles, the disciples, uh, he gave them words to speak. Now notice in John 17, verse 14. He says, I have given them thy word. This is Christ. He's praying to the Father. This is uh, before he's uh, uh, crucified. And he, he's making, he's, this is the, the prayer where he prays for unity. In John 17, verse 14, he says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So Christ said, I have given them thy word. God's word came to Christ. Christ gave it, in turn gave it to the apostles. And the apostles were going to go and give it to all the world. And anybody that received them received Christ. And if they received Christ, then they received God. It just works right back up the line. God gave the message. If the message was received, then God was received. If the message was rejected, then the, it was rejected back up the line. Uh, now, they were to carry his words into all the world. Matthew 10, verse 14, Jesus said, Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words. Now, notice that. Notice the connection here. They won't receive you, nor hear your words. When you depart out of that house or that city, shake off the dust of your feet. Why? Because... If they're not receiving you, they're not going to receive your word. They're rejecting you. They're rejecting Christ. Ultimately, they're rejecting God. So here's what we're seeing here. Receiving Christ's messengers meant that you received Christ. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me, John 13, 20. So we've seen a number of verses here, friends, that indicate that if a person receives Christ, they will also receive his messengers who are bringing his word, the word that he got from the Father. And if they receive the word, that means they're receiving the messengers, that means they're receiving Christ, that means they're receiving God. If they reject the word, if they reject the word, then they're rejecting the messengers, they're rejecting Christ, and they're rejecting the Father. So receiving the representatives 
of Christ, whether it be his word or his apostles or whoever it may be, is the same as, uh, excuse me, re re receiving his representatives is the same as receiving him. And rejecting his representatives is the same as rejecting as re rejecting him. Now, I, I think that's very important. Now, if we understand that principle, friends, it's going to be so clear when we get to phrases and understanding the use of phrases, receive Jesus, like we find in these little tracks that I'm, that I'm holding here in my hand. All right? So, uh, now, let's read another one here. In Matthew 25, Matthew 25, verses 37 through 40, I want you to see just how uh, consistently Christ uses this, um, this idea of individuals representing or standing for him, even though he may not be there, yet it is the same as receiving him. In Matthew 25, verses 37, beginning in verse, verse 37. Now, this is a picture that we have of uh, Christ giving on uh, of, a, of a judgment scene, Matthew 25. Maybe we should read some verses uh, prior to this. Uh, this is um, uh, Jesus is talking about the king that's uh, saying to his servants, and he says, let's, let's just pick up in verse um 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Now you see what Christ is doing there? Friends, members of the body of Christ, that's why when we say we're members of the body of Christ, we're connected to Christ. And that's the same reason why Jesus said to uh, uh, Saul of Tarsus in Acts chapter 9, here is Saul breathing out threatenings against the church and, and uh, persecuting the church. And uh, the Bible says, And Saul, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. So he's, he's uh, persecuting the disciples of the Lord. But when he meets Christ on the road to Damascus, uh, he uh, bright light shined from heaven. He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And, he, and the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now, wait a minute. I thought he's persecuting Christians, men and women, disciples. Exactly right. Because one stands for the other. The disciples represent Christ. If you persecute one, you're persecuting the other. If you receive one, you receive the other. Now, is it becoming clear how you, how you receive Christ? How you treat or how you respond to... Uh, individuals who are members of the body of Christ is how you would treat the Lord. <clears throat> now, so this is what we, what we have so far. Jesus has representatives who have his word. That is, one stands for the other. Uh, Jesus said, if you, if you hate Jesus, <clears throat> you hate his disciples. Uh, Matthew 10, 22, ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Okay? Uh, and and he said again in John fifteen eighteen, if the world hate you, know ye that it hated me before it hated you. And, that, and that's the pattern you see. You continue to see that. Receiving uh, Christ's disciples, receiving the words that they're preaching, the words that they're teaching, means that you're receiving Christ. So anytime you, you see receiving Christ, think receiving his apostles or receiving his word or receiving the words that they, they spoke. And vice versa, if to reject uh, them is to reject the one that sent them. Okay? And so that's, that's, that's very important 
to to the uh, uh, to the pattern here, because rejecting them means that you're also going to reject their words. Now let's look again. Uh, remember, Jesus said, "If if they if they don't receive you, if they don't receive you, dust you dust your feet off." But what was it that caused them to not be received? What what caused the rejection? If, if Christ's disciples came into a city or town and, and they were rejected, what caused the rejection? It was always the preaching of the word. Look at Matthew 10, 14. Write this down, Matthew 10, 14. And whosoever shall, rece shall not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Now, friends, this is very important because you may be listening to my voice right now and you're deciding whether you're going to receive it or reject it. Now listen, I don't, I'm not telling you to receive it simply because I'm saying it, but I'm telling you that what I'm saying is right from the Bible. I'm telling you to, I'm asking you to please verify, check it, you know, go behind me, look up these verses, see if what I'm saying so, be like those Bereans in Acts 17 verse 11, I'm not asking you to accept it just because you heard me say it. I'm asking you to accept it because you heard me say it and you checked it out and it was true. But if you reject what is being said, then you're ultimately rejecting Christ. Ultimately, you're rejecting God because you're not receiving the words that ultimately came from God. And so you're rejecting God, you're rejecting Christ, and you you would be rejecting Paul or Peter or whoever uh, happened to uh, be writing the verse that you're that you're reading or that you're studying. And that's how you receive, and that's how you uh, that's how you receive or, or accept uh, Christ. <clears throat> okay. Now, let me stop here. Maybe that you have some questions. I don't know if I'm going too fast, too slow, uh, making things muddy or clear. But if you want to call, you can call into the program. The phone number is three three six four two seven nine six nine six. That's four two seven nine six nine six. WMYN or 627-9563-627 WLOE. Now, let me give you an example of this. In Acts 13, 44 through 46. Acts 13, verses 44 through 46. This is where Paul and, and uh, Barnabas are preaching, and they're going to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, which is what Christ said. The, the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so that's, that's how they took the gospel. But in Acts 13, now notice this, when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were, now notice, spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. See, he said, well, they were arguing with Paul. Well, they were arguing with Paul, but they were arguing with what he was saying. They were, they were not receiving what he was saying. They were not receiving Paul. They spoke against, you say, well, they spoke against Paul. Well, they did. They also spoke against what he was saying. They were one and the same. Because in this case, Paul is telling them the gospel, and they are speaking against those things which are spoken by Paul. Now, were they receiving Paul? No. Were they rejecting Paul? Yes. Were they receiving Paul's words? No. Were they, reje reje were they rejecting the uh, words that Paul spoke? Yes. See, they were contra contradicting and blaspheming against the things that were spoken. Now, Jesus said, if they receive you and they receive your words, they're going to receive me. But if they reject your words, they're rejecting you and they're rejecting me and they're rejecting the Father. Now this is what the Bible goes on to say. Acts 13 verse 45. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves worthy, unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Now, what did they do? Did they reject Paul? Yes. How did they reject Paul? They reject the things that he said. He said, look, you, you, 
It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it, that's the word of God, from you, you're judging yourselves in worthy of everlasting life. So we're going to turn to the Gentiles. Were they receiving his word? No. They were rejecting his word. Were they receiving Christ? No. They were rejecting his word. So rejecting his word is the same as rejecting Christ. Receiving his word is the same as receiving Christ. So receiving the word is, is the same as receiving Christ. Now notice, notice the opposite here. Notice what happens when the word was received. Notice what happens when the word is received. Let's go back to that parable of the sower. Let's go back to the parable of the sower. In Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to begin in about verse 18. Matthew 13 and verse 18. Jesus says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received a seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and with Anon, and anon with joy receiveth it. Now, are you seeing? Are you seeing these these uh, phrases, friends? Are you listening to this? He received the word. They received the word, right? And they heard the word. He that receiveth the word, the seed in the stony places, the same as he that hear heard the word, because hearing the word is in one way of receiving the word, and a jo and with anon with joy received it. Now, just hearing it doesn't mean that you received it because you can hear some things and reject it. That's what we just saw in Acts 13. But in one sense, if you hear it and receive it, now you're acting upon it. And the Bible says hearing is, is, uh, is connected to receiving. All right? Hearing the word is connected to receiving. Yet, this is verse 21, Yet hath uh, he not root in himself, but it dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. And also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So the seed is the word, and to receive the seed is to receive the word. Now, now, friends, I, I mean, I think I think if you if you're a blind man, you can see that, right? I mean, if you can see through a ladder, you can see how clear that is. Receiving the word is. Is accepting it, is, is obeying it, right? You're acting upon it. Even for a little while, they received the word. Some of these, the stony ground and the thorny ground, they received the word. It took root, it, it changed, it, it operated in their heart, but other things choked it out. Now those by the wayside, they didn't receive it at all, right? But those that heard the word received it. Those that received the seed took it to their heart, it, it grew, it changed. They had joy. They, uh, they with joy received it, and then cares and things more so forth choked it out. But the seed is the word, and receiving the word is, is, uh, is what we're talking about. Receiving Christ, then that's the equivalent of receiving Christ. All right. Now let's look at let's look at some more. Friends, we're just going through the Bible. We're just seeing where how uh, receiving the word that Christ sent his apostles or disciples out to preach. How it's connected with receiving Christ. That's all we're doing. This is basically just a word study. You could do this at home. Right? Get your strong concordance out. If you don't have a strong concordance, we need to get you one. But you can get a strong concordance for next to nothing at a bookstore or, you know, online. If you're if you're getting getting online, you can find you a strong concordance. And I have a actually I have a Bible program that I'd be glad to give you a copy of. It's and you can put it on your computer, and it has uh, concordance and things like that on it. Uh, 
You can do your own word studies. But all we're doing is just looking at these words that, that Jesus says. He says received, and we're just seeing how, how they're all tied in together. Jesus said, if you receive me, you receive the Father. Receive, if they receive you, they're receiving me. If they receive your word, they're receiving you. And it's all, all tied together. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Now, wait a minute. They received the word. Samaria had received the word. What does that mean? They passed out Bibles. <laughs> Friends, that's not receiving the word. I mean, you can go down here and you can pass out Bibles like they do at the Christmas parade with candy. You know, you could chunk Bibles out and people say, oh, I got me a Bible. And I hear people all the time, oh, I've got a Bible. I've got a Bible. I've got a big family Bible. I've got a great big Bible. Okay, well, good. What do you do with it? What have you done with the contents of it? If the word's not in your heart, having that Bible's not going to help you. See that? So we're talking about what do you do with the word? Receiving the word is not just laying hold of your Bible. Receiving the word is putting it into your heart. We've already seen that <clears throat> with the parable of the um, uh, with the parable of the of the sower. So they had received the word. They received the word. Here's another one in Acts 11, verse 1. The apostles and brethren which were at Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Well, what had they done? What had they done? What had the Samaritans done to receive the word of God? What had the Gentiles done to receive the word of God? That's really what we're talking about. Because when we find that out, when we find out, we're going to know exactly what it means to receive the word, and then we're going to know exactly what it means to receive Christ. Because they're all tied in together, right? Let's look at one more. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. Paul says, For this cause also think we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now, how had these Thessalonians received the word of God? How, how had they received it? What was the result of them receiving the word of God? What was the result of the, the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8 receiving the word? What happened when the Gentiles received the word? in Acts 10 with Cornelius, and then it was reported there in Acts 11 that, that the Gentiles had received the word. What, what was the result? I mean, what happened after that? Friends, when someone receives the word, it's not just they laid hold on it. It, it doesn't mean they just grabbed the book or they grabbed the scroll and they, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got the book. That's, no, that's not what it is. Notice this. In James 1 and verse 21, James says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. And then in 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6, this is what you know, Paul just said to the Thessalonians. They received the word of God, which they had heard of, of Paul. They received it not as the word of men, but as in truth the word of God. In 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6, the chapter right before that, he said, you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. Receiving the word means you become a follower of the word, a follower of those that had given you the word, in this case, the apostles. But it, it, it follows that if you received the word and became followers of the Lord, you did so because you had been obedient to the word that you heard. That's different from the folks in Acts 13. In Acts 13, they rejected the word of God. Right? They spake against the word of God. They spoke against Paul and the word that he had spoken, and so they, they didn't receive it. But now, <clears throat> excuse me. So now when we're talking about receiving the word, we have to then 
conclude that it is connected in a very strong fashion to receiving Christ. All right? Receiving Christ. Because that that's I mean that's how it's connected. If you receive the uh the messenger, you receive the word, you receive the message, you receive the messenger, you receive the Messiah. Because they're all connected there. These people were saved because they heard the word and had received it by being obedient to it. Now that's how you really lay hold of it. That's how it comes into your heart and takes root. It's through obedience to it. You say, well, James, how do you know that? Well, let's look. In Acts 2, <clears throat> verses 37, beginning verse 37. Now I know y'all, you've heard us talk about uh, Acts 2 before and, and uh some of you probably pretty pretty familiar with it. Some of you, your 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 preachers tell you stay out of Acts two. They tell you stay out of the Book of Acts, which is really a shame, because the Book of Acts is what lays the groundwork to a, the rest of the New Testament. Many of the letters that were written in the, that are written in the New Testament uh, have their beginning in the Book of Acts. But look at this in Acts two, verse thirty seven. Peter and the eleven have have convinced the the large group of, of Jews there on the day of Pentecost, that Christ is the Messiah, and they killed him, and they need to repent. And they said, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now notice. Now notice this. <clears throat> Peter has told them what they should do. Repent and be baptized for the mission of sins. Now, if we come down two more verses. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. See, so friends, when you receive the word, that means you're acting upon what it says to do. It's not just hearing it. If you just hear it and don't do anything about it, James has a, has a few things to say about that. James chapter 1 and verse 25. Uh, let's start in verse 22. Uh, uh, he says, but be ye doers of the word. Now, in, in the previous verse is where he said, receive with meekness the engrafted word that can save your souls which is able to save your souls. And then he says in verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So receiving the word is not just letting it go into your ears. Receiving the word is acting upon it, doing the word. For if any uh, be a hearer of the word, this is James 1, 23, if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You know, a lot of times people read that, and they say, well, a doer of the word. No, he says doer of the word in verse 23, but verse 25 says, if you're not a forgetful hearer, you are a doer of the work. Now, I know that's taboo among many of my religious neighbors. They don't want to have anything to do with work. You know, they, they want that lazy religion. But James says, be a doer of the work. Be a doer of the word. You have to do something. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and brightens not his tongue, but does he with his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Is vain. All right? So you have to be a doer of the work. So receiving the word means you do something. You act upon what you've heard. That's what it means to be a doer of the work. All right? Now, are you receiving this? Are you listening? Are you receiving this? 
let me know if you're if you're receiving it or if you're if um, if if our lines are getting crossed here. If you're not receiving it, and I don't want it to be because I'm uh, muddying up the water because I'm not making it clear. I want you to receive it um, because you understand it. I want to make sure that it that is clear. Three three six four two seven nine six nine six. 4279696 or 6279563 6279563 So notice this notice this in Acts 20 and verse 32 uh, Paul said and now brethren I commend you to God and the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified Now think about this way you want to receive God's grace how about receiving his word of grace Someone says, well, I'm saved by grace only, but they don't want to have to do anything to do with the Bible. Well, you can't receive, you can't receive God's grace without receiving the word of grace. I mean, the gospel is what brings, uh, I mean, it's the grace of God that brings salvation, but it's the word of grace, it's the word of grace that um, puts you into, or tells you where the grace of Christ is. Galatians 1 verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. God's grace is what sends the gospel, but the gospel then calls you into the grace of Christ, the, the, uh, the favors of Christ. See that? You say, well, I don't, want, I don't want the word. I'm rejecting the word. Well, then you're rejecting grace. See, see how they're all connected? Receiving the word is receiving Christ. It's receiving God. Rejecting the word is re really rejecting God's grace. It's rejecting uh, salvation. Rejecting all the things that God has, has, has given that come through his word. And so that's why Paul says, if you accept another gospel, it's just like accepting another Christ. It's not going to do you any good. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Notice what Paul says. He says, but I fear, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, but I fear, lest by any means as a servant beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So someone comes along and tells you something differently, and you receive that, guess what? You're, you're giving up the truth, the true Christ, true grace, true mercy. You're giving up all the things that come from receiving the true gospel, and you're going to something else, counterfeit. That's why... Friends, this idea of one church or whatever being just as good as another, one gospel is not as good as another. And you know what? It takes another gospel to, to have all these different things. If you have all these different churches, it takes a different gospel. It takes a different grace. It takes a different uh, word. It takes a different spirit. It takes a different, uh, uh, really, uh, different Jesus. Because... The Jesus that you read about in the Bible only has one church and provides salvation through one means, and that's through receiving of his word. So to reject it, you know, to reject it means you're rejecting Christ. So how, how does one receive Jesus? How does one receive Jesus then? It comes by receiving the words that he left. That, that's how you receive Jesus. John 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. Rejects me, receives not my words. Hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. You say, well, James, I, I, I love the gospel, but I don't agree with your preaching. I'm not asking you to agree with my preaching. I'm asking you to agree with the Bible. Well, but I don't like when you say, "Well, if I'm giving, it, if I'm showing you right from the from the scripture, and if you ask me a Bible question, I'm gonna give you a Bible answer." 
I mean, if you're wanting to reject what I say because I'm saying it, that's on you. But I'm saying, friends, I'm showing you the Bible. And if you can show me where I'm where I'm uh, being misled or wrong on the Scripture, I'll, I'll certainly uh, look at it. I certainly want to see it. You convince me, I'll change. But I'm saying at the same token, if I'm telling you the truth, and, and there's a lot of people I've talked to this, you know, I, I agree with what you said. Talked to a man the other day. He said, you know, I'm, I uh, was listening to y'all, and I was convinced, you know what, you know, these guys might be right on baptism for the mission of sins. He went back to the Wesleyan Church and said, I want, I asked the preacher, he said, uh, I want to be baptized for the mission of sins. And he said, the Wesleyan Church did it. The Wesleyan Church preacher did it. What? Now, did he receive the gospel? No. He did. He, he, he took that phrase from the Bible, right? I'm, I want you to say I'm being baptized for the mission of sins. But, friends, Bible baptism does one thing for you. I mean, it puts you one place. It puts you in the Lord's church. It doesn't put you in the Wesleyan church or the Methodist church or the Baptist church or anywhere else. So that's like that's like me saying, you know, I've got a, I went down here to, to a Burger King and I got me a Whopper. Now what they really gave me was one of those tofu burgers. Well, that's not a Whopper. I mean, that doesn't have any meat. Well, it, 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 it looks like meat. Well, it may look like meat. It may smell grilled, and it may be on the same bun and have lettuce, tomatoes, and everything else on it, but it ain't a Whopper. It's not the same as a burger. See that? And just because you say, I ate a Whopper, doesn't mean you really ate one. And just because you said, I received Christ's words and did this one thing that Christ said do, doesn't mean that you did everything that Christ said you need to do. You're still rejecting what Christ said. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. How can you how can you receive Christ? How can you receive Christ's words on one thing and then reject the rest of it and then turn around and convince yourself I did what the Lord said? Can you really do that? Can you pick and choose? I don't think so, friends. I, I know you can't. Jesus said, He that re rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. If you don't receive all of God's words, that is, if you don't obey all that God said do, you're rejecting, you're rejecting him. All right? Because, so rejecting Christ means re receiving not his word. Receiving Christ is receiving his word. Receiving his word means you're obeying his word. Therefore, when we're talking about obeying or obeying the word, we're talking about receiving Christ and the grace of God and... Um, you know, all those things that, that, that come from God. But rejecting one aspect of it is rejecting all of it. And so, uh, you know, how, how is it that people can say, well, I'm receiving Christ, and they, and they haven't done what God said? Now, let me come back to this little track here. Let me come back to this little track. This track, and like I said, I, I, it's got... Charity Baptist Church from Eden, written on the back. Got the sinner's prayer, said the sinner's prayer, not in the Bible. It says, receive Christ, and they quote John 1, 12 and 13. And then, and I read this before. They said, repent, believe, receive Jesus by faith. He will do the rest. My friends, why would I receive that? Why would I receive this? Why would I receive this paper? This track, when it's not get, when it's not got a verse on it for that, by your head. Where's the verse that says, by your head, repent, believe, and receive Jesus by faith? And he'll do the rest. Where's, where's that verse? See, friends, receiving the word, receiving Christ, means you're obedient to his word. Now, that's what that means. And there's just no two ways around about it. So I'm not going to receive these tracts in this prayer. This next one says, God be merciful to me a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. Where, where's the verse? 
be merciful to me a sinner. That was spoken by a man in Luke 18. That was spoken by a, a, a publican who was already a child of God. See, this is not for people who are outside the body of Christ. So how do you receive Christ? Well, here's how you receive Christ. I've got just a few minutes left. Five minutes left. <clears throat> Acts 15, 7. Now, if receiving the word is how you receive Christ, listen to this. Acts 15, 7. Peter said that God made choice among the Gentiles by his mouth that the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. You have to hear the gospel. You have to hear the word of the gospel. You can't just say, I've heard something. You have to hear the word of the gospel and believe. Acts 17 and verse 30. The Bible says, now here's the word. Are you going to receive this? And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. You have to hear, you have to believe. Hear the word, believe it. Repent of your sins. Acts 8 and verse 37, Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now you have to make that confession that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And by the way, friends, the New Testament does not say, it does not teach that a person who is outside the body of Christ confesses their sins in order to be saved from them. You never hear about someone confessing all their sins at the mourner bench or at the altar or whatever. That, that's just not what they do. Confessing your faults one to another is, is in the Bible. That's for members of the Lord's church. James five sixteen. Confessing your sins, that's, that's a privilege for a child of God, someone who's already in a covenant relationship with God. But I've heard people say, well, I, I guess I'm going to confess my sins. Well, why? You fish, if you're if you're obeying the gospel, if you're receiving the word, you're fixing to get rid of them, all your past sins. Why do you want to talk about them? So you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that you believe that, and then you're baptized. Acts 22 and verse 16, Saul of Tarsus was told, Now why, now why tarest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? Now how is it that they received Christ. They received Christ by obeying what they were told. They were received they received Christ by obeying what they were told by people who were preaching and teaching what Christ gave them to preach and teach. And friend, that's why we stress so much so many times. If someone is telling you something, you need to check it out by the Bible because if you're believing it and you're following it and it's not in the Bible and you haven't even gone through, put forth the effort to find out if it's in the Bible or not. How do you know that what you're receiving is, is the Word of God? Because if you're not receiving the Word of God, you, you haven't really received Christ. That's, that's what it's all about. You, you've got to receive the gospel that Christ gave them to preach in order to receive Him. And that's what we say constantly, friends. You have to go to the Bible. You, you have to go to the Bible. And, and yet there, there's a lot of people that they have a Bible and they hear someone saying they're preaching from the Bible and they believe everything they've heard is really from the Bible, but they haven't checked it out for themselves. How do you know that what you're receiving is, is truly the Word of God? Friends, the way you receive Christ is by receiving His words. And in the Church of Christ, that's what you'll get. You'll get the Word of God. You'll get the Word of Christ. And you'll know that when you receive it, you, re you have received Christ. If I can help you receive Christ by obeying the gospel, I'd be glad to do that. Why don't you call me? 276-340-2653. That's my number. We're fixing to go off the air. 276-340-2653. 276-340-2653. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. It's how you can reach me by email. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. Visit us at 250 the Boulevard. Till next time, friends, this is a word from the Lord.